a few announcements for you before we begin our service. Supernatural ministry requires supernatural power and anointing. Zechariah 4, 6, 40 years of pastoring FWBC and 55 years of ministering. To honor our very own Pastor Bishop, a celebration service will be held on Sunday, October the 1st, during our regular morning service, worship service. Guest preacher for this special occasion will be Overseer Michael Ellerby, pastor of New Beginnings Full Gospel Ministries in High Point, North Carolina. He will be accompanied by his choir and congregation. There will be a gift basket set up that Sunday for auxiliaries, ministers, <coughs> ministries, members, and friends of FWBC who would like to show your appreciation and love for Pastor Bishop at that time or throughout the month. Thank you, Pastor's Aid Ministry. A big thank you to Dr. Dennis Bishop and FWBC family and friends. With your support of the Youth Missionaries Quench Your Thirst Project, $650 has been raised for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of the Piedmont Triad. Amen. These funds will be used to provide a home away from home for families and children who are receiving medical care in our community. Ice Cream Social. The missionaries will host an ice cream social on August 20th at Bellevue Picnic Area right after morning worship service. During this time, youth and parents will receive information about the Forsyth County Missionary Union and how they can become involved by filling, excuse me, by filling vacant officer positions there will be at FWBC. They may also sign up to go present the check to the Ronald McDonald House on August 22nd at 2.30. The Seniors and Retirees Ministries is sponsoring an informational presentation conducted by Senior Services, which will focus on the Memory Co Connection Project and other programs. This Senior Services, which will focus on that event, will be held on Monday, August 21st at 1130 at the church. Refreshments will be provided. Your prayers and support are greatly appreciated. Attention all students, get ready to show up for the glow up. Come out on Saturday, August 26th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. for the FWBC Community Back to School Bash. Bring your friends for an evening of food, fun, and school supplies. To our church family, the Forsyth County Missionary Union has received an urgent request from the Salvation Army for twin bed sheets bath towels, and pillows. Each church in the union is asked to support this mission effort by providing what items they can from the list. We will be collecting these items from Jul July 29th through August 31st. Items can be placed in the bins in the vestibule or given to Jeanette Kelly or Geneva Payne. May God bless you as you answer the call of mission. For anyone who has pictures of this year's homecoming event, we would love for you to share them with the church so they can be placed in our archives. Please give copies of your pictures to Sister Janet Ross. Thank you in advance. This is a reminder also, we have Wednesday evening services held each Wednesday starting at 6.30 with prayer. We thank you for your continued support by giving. You may give online by going to our website, www.firstwalltown.org, and click the giving link. Those in person may give at the conclusion of service as you exit the building. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning and enjoy the worship service. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord, and great is his faithfulness towards each and every one of us. We thank you, God, for your loving hand that you have placed upon us on this day. You have blessed us to come into your house of worship, to sing songs, to fellowship, to worship and adore you and sit in anticipation 
for a mighty word that is going to come from your servant on today. We worship you, God. We love you. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that is due unto you and you alone. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. He's a great God. Hallelujah. We know he's faithful. Glory to God. We know you're faithful, God. Glory to God. We know you're faithful, God. Great Glory to God. Is thy faithfulness, oh God, my Father. There is, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thy change in not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thy forever will be. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Great is thy faithfulness. Yeah, great. Yeah. i 
he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. You never stop, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. Even when I don't see it, he's working. Yeah, Even yeah. when I don't feel yeah. it, you're working. He never stops, he never stops working.
In the name of Jesus, we ask that you have your way, God. Have your Father way, God, Jesus. God, anoint your manservant now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. God, we thank you for the anointing that he that he walks in, God. We thank you for the blood that covers his life, oh yes, God. Jesus. We thank you for instruction that's given to your people, oh God. Now, Father God, meet needs in his life now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. God, pour out your spirit upon him, God. In yeah. the name of Jesus, God. In your name, Anoint God. him afresh. In the name of in Jesus, your name, God. give him deeper revelation knowledge. In the name of Jesus, God, yeah. we bless your name. God, we honor your name and we thank you. God, we pray for every college student that went back to school on yes, this week, God. Yes. We thank you for our blood covering thank over you, them, Lord. God. Thank you, we Lord. We thank you that you have given thank them you, favor Lord. with professors, God. Thank that money that they didn't apply for is yeah. coming to them, God. Woo. And we thank you. Come on, clap Glory. your hands all over this place. Bless them, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless them, God, Be as your only you can. Young people now, God. Bless Should them, they God. Never step up for, let them prophesy. Make them good stewards. As they've never prophesied before, God. Let their hands be healing hands now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, let them heal parents now. In the name of Jesus, let them come in contact with teachers. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. God, we believe you now. Yeah. Have your way, God. He satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Open your mouth and say something to him today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, Pastor, I don't know what to say. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what to say. You're king of kings. You're Lord of... Open your mouth and say something to him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> That's right. Come on, connect it, connect it, connect it, connect it, get connected. Get connected, plug in to the power source. Father, let the words of our mouths and meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are our strength, our redeemer. Bless us in our time together today in the word. God, we thank you for the word. We give you glory for the word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Hide your word in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Forgive us for any sins or shortcomings today. And bless us now in our time together. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, I'm going to receive this word with gladness today. And I'm going to be made better because of the word. Now give God praise and glory today. Go ahead and speak to somebody on your road. Speak to somebody on your road. Go ahead and speak to somebody on your road. Y'all bless God for the music ministry today. Go ahead and give God praise for the music ministry. And then thank God for your space in this building today. Hallelujah. Somebody just shout, I'm being blessed right now in the very seat I'm sitting in. I'm being blessed right now. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Good morning, First Church. God bless all of you today. Thank God for the worship. Thank God for Sunday school this morning. Lady Smith taught the Sunday school this morning. She taught the adult class. Our youth ministry. Our A-team had a great class. Miss Bowler taught them this morning and they shared their nuggets with us. Our young men shared their nuggets. Our young ladies from Miss Stephanie's class shared their nuggets. Our young men from Brother Ronaldo's class shared nuggets. Man, we had a powerful, great Sunday school this morning. Amen? 
Look down your row and say, come on, I'm inviting you to come out to Sunday school with me. Go ahead. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I know they don't want to hear it, but go ahead and tell them, I'm inviting you to come to Sunday school. And then do one more thing while you got your courage up. Say, I'm inviting you to come out on Wednesday evening for Wednesday worship. <laughs> Y'all too scared for me. <laughs> Y'all looking at folk that's got that look on their face like, 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 boo, I'll bite you. You better not say nothing to me. Go ahead and tell them anyway. I'm looking for you on Wednesday evening and Sunday school on Sunday morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Preacher Adams, Preacher Brenda Adams ministered this past Wednesday, and Lord, she did a great job. She, she was talking about, she was talking on Wednesday night about, I recommend you to Jesus. Y'all throw that in the atmosphere while you're throwing stuff in the atmosphere. Tell somebody, I'm recommending you to Jesus. See, you can, you can recommend folk that's already saved and filled with the Spirit to Jesus because there are so many things we're connected to when it comes to the Father. Amen? So, so, so tell somebody, I'm recommending you to Jesus today. See, you don't know what some folk came in here with. And uh, tell them, I'm recommending you to Jesus. When you go to the doctor, you don't always go for one problem. How many of y'all know you go to the doctor for many problems? You got a whole lot of stuff going on sometimes. Then sometimes you don't have stuff going on this time that you had going on when you were there the last six months or the last year. And so you go back for something else. Tell them, I'm recommending you to Jesus. Whatever it is, hallelujah. Let's go to the Word. Let's go to the Word. Y'all shout out, bless God for the Word today. Now, I've got a text from Sister Joelle, and uh, she's telling me that Isaiah, this is Isaiah's last Sunday in worship before, before leaving for school on Thursday. This is going to be his last Sunday in worship here before leaving to go to school on Thursday. So y'all bless God for Isaiah today. Yeah, yeah. God bless you, Isaiah. DJ's already prayed. Minister David has already prayed for all of the college students this morning. And so you're included in that prayer along with others who have already gone back. So God bless you. We've enjoyed our time with you while you were here over the summer Always enjoy every chance you get to come and be with us here. And uh, thank you for your words of encouragement that you gave uh, towards me on last Sunday. And uh, we bless God for you. Thank, thank you for the dance that you did a few Sundays ago uh, as a tribute to your pastor. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you in all of your endeavors, in your schooling, in your studying, in your basket, in your field in your store, in your barn. Bless you going out. Bless you coming in, down sitting, and up rising. Go ahead, y'all buy into that. I'm, I'm speaking something that all of us can come into agreement with. God bless you. God bless you, man. God bless you. Joel's asking us to continue to keep her and Zare in our prayers. And she said, thank you, and, and we love you. And that means all of us. She loved, they love all of us. And so God bless you all today. All right. God bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So good to see all of you this morning. I'm glad to see everybody. Everybody. Good to see all of you. Thank God Bev's able to be back with us today. Yeah, Bev's able to be back with us. Yeah. Yeah. Bev returned Wednesday night and uh, the service was so good, she's able to be back with us today. She, she's been out for several weeks, stuff going on with her foot. And no, I didn't kick her. I didn't step on her foot. I ain't kick her. No. But uh, she's able to be back with us today, and we're thankful to God. Anybody been out for a while and you're returning, if I don't, even if I don't see who you are from up here, if you've been out for a while and you're returning, just throw your hand up. Because I, I don't want to miss anybody. Huh? Sister Tita back there? Where's Sister Tita? Woo! Glory to God. Y'all bless God for Sister Tita today. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. So good to see you. Thank God for the strength He's giving you. Thank God for the strength that He's continuing to give you. Beautiful home-going service for Brother Tita the other week. And uh, we're still rejoicing with you, still walking with you, still praying with you, still trusting God with you, still asking God to continue to renew your strength. And thank God for your joy today. Amen. I said thank God for your joy today. Hallelujah. God bless you. So good. So good you're here. Anybody else? If I didn't see you, throw your hand up. If you've been out and you're returning for a while. If they're in your area, if they're in your area, you go ahead and bless God for them. Sister Jackie Jones is back there today. All right. Y'all roll Jackie in here. Give, give God praise for Jackie today. Thank God for Jackie. Yeah. Glory to God. Hmm? Tanisha, Rice, and the girls are back there today? Oh, my. Where y'all? Where are y'all? Throw your hand up, Tanisha. Let me see. Oh, I see a hand waving back. Glory to God. You're going to make me walk this aisle today. <laughs> Glory to God. Huh? Oh, she beside Joel. Okay, I saw another hand way back on on this side. Is another Tanisha back here? Huh? Okay, let me let me do one right quick. Hold on a minute. I saw a hand back here when I said Tanisha. Is that somebody back there that was trying to get my attention? Oh, they was pointing over this way. Okay. All right, Tanisha. I see you over there now. God bless you. God bless you and the girls. Thank God for you today. All right, Keisha's mom is back here today. Y'all bless God for her. She's back here today. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. Thank you for letting me know that. Y'all pray for Sister Dela Deidre Shula. Sister Deidre Shula's mother is going into palliative care. So y'all keep her lifted in your prayers. And then the niece of Deacon Bullock has been put in palliative care. Also, y'all keep these people in your prayer. Will you do that? Sister Deidre Shula's mother, Sister Pouncey, Lady Pouncey, is going into palliative care along with Deacon Bullock's niece. What's Deacon Bullock's niece name? All right, well, when y'all pray for her, just say God, Deacon Bullock's niece. All right, will y'all do that? Yeah, y'all pray for his niece. All right, God bless you today. Let's do the word. Let's do the word, the word, the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited about the Word. I really am. Not just today. I'm excited about the Word all the time. I mean all the time. I'm excited about God's Word. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Preacher Alice Miller is uh, scheduled for service to a surgery tomorrow, so y'all keep lifting her in your prayers. We prayed with her this morning in Sunday school, but y'all keep lifting her in your prayers. Will you do that? Sister Sandra Foster is going to be uh, being scheduled again for another surgery. And we're believing God, if she's just got to have it, that everything's going to work good for her. Amen? We believe in God that if she's just got to have it, did y'all catch that? If she's just got to have it, it's going to all work good for her. But I believe the Lord is healing right now in this service. Anybody else other than me believe that? I believe the Lord is healing right now in this service. Let me say this to you. It is the will of God. It is. It is. It is. It is is the will of God for you and I to prosper in every area of our lives. Do I need to say that again? It is the will of God. It is the will of God for you and I to prosper in every area of our lives. That's my introductory statement. Come on and say that with me. It is the will of God 
for me me. to prosper in every area, in every area of my life. Not just in my wallet, not just in my pocket, not just with a credit card, but it is the will of God for me to prosper in every area of my life. That is both physically and spiritually. It's also mentally and emotionally. It is the will of God for me to prosper in every area of my life. Now, if you believe that, go ahead and say thank you, Jesus, already. If you believe that, go ahead and bless the name of our God. I want to thank God for our nephew that's back with us from the camp that he was working with this summer. Kai, Kai is back in church with us. He worked hard over the summer, and he's back here today. So glad to be back here. He invited one of his friends again that's uh, here worshiping with him today. God bless you. Thank God for your presence today, young man. So good to have you here with us. It is the will of God. It is the will of God. It is the will of God. The Holy Spirit is saying to us, it is the will of God for us to prosper as believers now in every area of our lives. As a believer, this is the will of God. And I'm going to walk you through a couple of scriptures this morning, but I want to talk to us today about how the Holy Spirit helps us as believers to manage our lives on a daily basis. I want to tell us how the Holy Spirit helps us to manage our lives every day, even on a daily basis, if we will commit our lives and our ways to the Holy Spirit. I want, I want to give you some simple principles and some simple laws today as to how the Holy Spirit will help us if we will ask Him. Yeah, that's, that's the key. If we will ask Him if we will submit to Him, if we will turn over to Him, if we will give to Him. See, see, the Holy Spirit just don't want to help us to manage our lives on Sunday morning. Holy Spirit wants to help us, including me, to manage our lives on a daily basis. And when I talk about managing our lives, I'm talking about managing almost every area of our lives that I won't get to today, but I do want to touch on a couple of scriptures, and I want to share a couple of things with you. Because the Holy Spirit is not just a manager of Sunday mornings. How many of y'all know the Holy Spirit is a manager every day? He wants to talk to us every day. He wants to lead us every day, guide us every day. See, the Holy Spirit is not just a platform manager. He wants to help you in your private areas of your life. Those areas that nobody else see that you want people to think you got under control and in management. But the Holy Spirit says, "Uh uh-uh, I I see, I I already know. I I know where you are. I know, I I know, I I know the mismanagement that goes on behind the scene. See, a lot of us can come out and we can look good on the outside, but, but, but management on the inside is not working for some of us. You can come out looking like a million, but be just as raggedy as a can of kraut. And the Holy Spirit says, I want to help you manage that. How many of y'all know you can come out smiling and grinning and laughing, and folk think you got it all together, but on the inside, we're falling apart. The Holy Spirit said, I want you to talk to my people today, and I want you to help them to understand from Scripture, if you can take what the Word of God is saying, how we can manage our lives as an individual, as a family as a body, as a corporate entity, as a church, as a community, how we can manage our lives under the Holy Spirit and with the Holy Spirit if we're willing to commit it to Him and to ask Him for His help. Now, how many of you know if you don't ask for help, you won't get it? A lot of folks say, I can do it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And we like to think we do, but, 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 but if you don't ask for help, you won't get help. But when you ask the Holy Spirit for help, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit wants to help us manage our lives on a daily basis. He wants us us to manage our affairs, our, our Christian affairs, our financial affairs, our 
relational affairs, our physical affairs, the Holy Spirit. Hear me good. Y'all listen to this. Listen to this because the Holy Spirit is speaking to some of us. Listen to this. He wants to help us if we'll ask him how to manage any area of our lives, of our lives that are not under management. So you can start singing that song, I'm under new management. Huh? Holy Spirit want to give us a song, not just because the world sing it, because they say I'm in love under new management. He said, I want you to have that song. You can say it too. I'm in love under new management. Because when you start loving the Holy Spirit and loving the things that the Holy Spirit is doing with you by helping us to know how to manage our lives, our affairs, our meetings, our time, our everything that he wants to help us with, you turn around and start singing that song too. I'm in love under new management. <laughs> So y'all just think that y'all just think that that's got something to do only only with relation. It does. Because when you got relation with the Holy Spirit like he wants us to have with him, you're in love under new management. Amen somebody? Now y'all get deep on me and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote the whole song to you. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this. God, God has given to every spirit-filled believer the power to get wealth. Now, if I was telling you the Holy Spirit was passing out a million dollars in here today, if only you give God some praise, I, I wouldn't be able to retain, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to hold, uh, listen, listen, you, 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 you throw me down those steps to get up here to get... Your, your praise would be so loud, you, you'd be raising the roof off of this place. But let me tell you something. He's got more than a million dollars worth of something that he wants to give you. Because most of you, if you got a million right now, you'll be broke by this time next week. First and foremost, because you're going to take that million, which doesn't go far at all anymore, and you're going to try to buy everything that you can think of that you hadn't been able to buy in all this time. So you're going to be broke by then. You're going to be broke before next week. Holy Spirit's got something to give every born-again believer who will ask him that's worth more than any million you can ever get. Getting up in the morning with good health and strength, that's worth more than a million. Some folk who get up in pain every morning, but get up on the morning where they're not in pain, that's worth more than a million. Having peace of mind is worth more than a million. Some of y'all rather be broke if you just had your peace of mind. Now, if I'm wrong, you tell me I'm wrong, but I know the Holy Spirit is right. Some of y'all, if you had the peace you want right now, you would say that's worth more than six million. Some of y'all would say that's worth more than a billion. Some of y'all, if you just had clarity in the areas of your life where you're seeking some clarity, that's worth more than a million. Some things that you are baffled about, some things that you're still wondering about, some things that you're still praying for the will of God to be clear about in your life, if, if it was made clear at this very moment, it, it means more than a billion or a million to you. And the Holy Spirit says, that's what I want you to help them with. I want you to help talk about it. Help them to get that. Help them to understand that. Let me make that statement again. God has given us the power to get wealth. However, here's my disclaimer. However, our faith to acquire wealth in any sense of the word wealth requires some practical actions on my behalf. Now, I know I just said a whole lot, and so I'm going to repeat that. Because he's given us the power to get wealth. And I'm going to go deeper into this in just a few minutes. 
Because normally when you start thinking about wealth, people immediately start thinking about finances. When, when we start throwing the word wealth around, immediately most of us, I know I do, most of us start thinking about money, finances, paying my house off, paying my boat off, or buying me a boat, or paying off my truck. Or paying. We think about wealth. We think about finances or things that are connected to finances. But let me make this statement again. He has given us the power to get wealth. However, however, our faith to acquire wealth, and here's what I want you to hear, in any sense of the word wealth that we're going to deal with today requires some practical actions on my behalf. That's why it's going to be important today that you pay attention to what the Holy Spirit wants to say to every one of us. That's why it is so important that I pay attention to what the Holy Spirit wants to say to every one of us. It was important when the Holy Spirit called my attention to this message and says, begin sharing this as another aspect or another characteristic of who I am. He says, I'm a manager and I want to help you and believers to know how to manage our lives on a daily basis. He says, I don't want to be a weekly manager. I don't want to just come in, you give me the praise, the adoration for what I'm doing for that moment, for that hour, or for what I've done for you since this morning. He says, I want them to know all week long that on Monday, if they'll ask me, I'll help them manage their lives. On Tuesday, if they'll ask me, I'll help them manage their life. On Wednesday, if they ask me. When they get caught in a jam, if they'll ask me, I'll help them to manage their life. If they are filled with the Spirit, I want to talk to them. I'm their, I'm, their, I'm their helper. I'm their paraclete. That word paraclete, Holy Spirit, as it refers to him as the paraclete, means my helper. Somebody say that with me. He's my helper. Paraclete. He's my helper. He doesn't want to just help me to shout. He wants to help me to know how to live after the shout. He, want, he don't want me to just say yes when I'm in here. He want to help me to say yes when I get caught in the jam, when, when temptation is all around, when, when there's stuff I could do but I don't want to do, but my flesh is screaming for it. He says if they'll ask me, I'm still their helper in that. I'll help them if they'll ask me when they've got more bills at the end of the month than they've got money. He's our helper. He's our helper. And anybody who's been called alongside you to help you with anything, when do you release to allow them to help you? He says, I want to help them in every area of their lives. So, so here it is. Here it is. He gives us the power to get wealth, our faith to acquire wealth in any sense of the word wealth, then is going to require more than me just asking. Because when he gives me the answer, I've got to be willing to do the practicality of working and following what he's giving me to do. Because faith without works is dead. You can have faith, but if you're not willing to do the practical things, how many of you know it doesn't work? It's dead. Faith with works doing the practical things that he's asking me to do 
will show bring about some good results. And I want to talk about a few of those things in just a few minutes. Let, 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 me, let me give you this. What, what, what this is saying to us, it, it simply means that there are laws and principles even in God's Word, even in our everyday lives, there are laws and principles that we must practice and govern ourselves by. And when we don't, you can't blame God. God's not robbing you. God's not taking anything from you. He doesn't need your joy. He's already got joy. The Hebrew writer said, but for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame. See what I'm saying? See, see, some of us think God needs our joy. He doesn't need our joy. What, 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 what I need is his joy because the joy of the Lord becomes my strength. Huh? You get, that's, that's why some of y'all got a little strength, because you got a little joy. More strength, more joy. Whole lot of joy, whole lot of strength. See, that's why some people don't understand the private struggles you have in your life and some of the things that you go through because you don't, you don't show it. Because the joy of the Lord becomes my strength. Not that he needs my strength, but I need what? His strength. And the more I joy in the Lord, the more strength I get. That's why some of us are overtaken by so many things and don't have any joy. He wants to give it to us, but we don't find joy in the Lord and whatever we're going through and dealing with. But for the joy that was set before him. I didn't see no joy at Calvary. I didn't see no joy when they were down at the foot of the cross gambling over his garment. I didn't see no joy when I know in just the next few minutes he's going to hang his head in the locks of his shoulder and he's going to give up the goat. What joy was that? But for the joy... In other words, Jesus was saying everything that I've been through from the time I went to the judgment hall up until this cross right now, he says, I found joy in it. Because the joy was saying, just wait the Sunday morning. <laughs> How many of y'all know you cannot have a dime in your pocket but have the joy? Sometimes a lot of y'all let folk know when you don't have a dime in your pocket. You can keep your mouth closed and not tell anybody, I ain't got a dime in my pocket. And the only thing they can see coming out of you is joy. You know why? Because even without the dime, I know my God is still supplying all of my needs, everything I need, everything I'm in need of. He's, he's still making a way out of no way. I, I, this ain't the first time I ain't had but a dime. And I ain't missed a meal. And some of y'all didn't cook it at home either. You went out to eat and didn't have a dime. You went out to eat just to get a, just, just to get a, listen, just to spend this last dime I got to get me a, a, a drink of water and somebody in there blessed me with a meal. You ain't missed a meal? You hadn't gone without a stitch of clothes on or a pair of shoes. May not have been what you wanted. But just listen, I'm trying to paint a picture before I get deep into the scriptures. I'm trying to paint a picture before we go further into the scriptures. See, a lot of us look at where we are, but you could be a lot worse off than where you are if the Lord wasn't doing what he's doing with you and in you and through you. I hear some people say, well, I didn't, Pastor, I didn't sleep good last night. I have so many restless nights. But then they'll turn around and they say, 
Man, I dozed off to sleep, and about 15 minutes later, I was awake again. Well, thank God for the 15 minutes. Because if he allowed you to get that 15 minutes, God can take that 15 minutes and make it feel like you have slept for anywhere from 3 to 4 or even to 7. Or how many of y'all know he can renew you in 15 minutes the way you feel like you've slept all night long? Here's the picture the Lord is trying to paint for us, that things could be a whole lot worse than what they are, but we don't recognize the Holy Spirit is working behind what I am seeing with my natural eye. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. He's working behind. The Holy Spirit is working behind what I'm actually seeing with my natural eye and what's really happening to me. And then here's something else the Lord kind of dropped on me as I, was, as I was meditating on this message. Here's something else the Lord kind of dropped on me. He said, help my people to understand that, that you really don't know what, what, what the picture really could look like. If you didn't have the faith to see the picture that you're seeing right now. Can I share this with you? I shared it in Sunday school this morning, and I'm going to share it with you. Our, our own Deacon, Deacon Marilyn Roseboro, who you all greeted in the lobby this morning. She was determined to be here today. I told her to stay at home. Get you some rest. You need to rest. We pull on her so much. I do. I pull on her a lot. We all pull on Deacon Roseboro a whole lot. She, she's got a whole lot of knowledge, a whole lot of wisdom about a whole lot of things, and, uh, and, and a lot of us pull on her a whole lot. But she ended up, she ended up in Kernersville at the hospital on Friday, and they thought she could have possibly had a, another stroke. So they kept her for observation, kept her Friday night, she stayed down in the emergency room all night, Friday night, and uh, Saturday morning, sometimes Saturday afternoon. She told me yesterday that they got her in a room. But uh, I, I didn't go until I knew it was time for me to go. We prayed when I got the message by text on Friday night. Prayed from where I was, there at the house, prayed from there. But I didn't go until yesterday when the Lord released me to go. And when, 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 when I knew it was time for me to go, I went. Went to Kernersville, didn't call to see if she was still there. They was telling me she could have been released early or she could have gone home. But I went at the time I know the Holy Spirit was leading us to go. Listen, when I got there, went directly to her room, and just as I got there to the room, her doctor was in there talking with her and her brother Al, and I'll, I'll, I'll save you all the, the details, but after the doctor left, I stepped up there in the room. Listen, I already knew God had, had done the work. What they thought could have possibly been another stroke was not another stroke at all. Dr. Tola said, you didn't have another stroke. I'm going to give you some medicine, and you can get ready to go home. I'm getting ready to do your papers, fill your papers out, and I'm getting ready to go home. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I said, hallelujah, Jesus. And she's here today. She is here in this worship today. Here's what the Holy Spirit started saying to me right there when I was leaving the hospital the other day. I didn't stay with her long. Just went by to do the Lord bless you and keep your prayer. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. I don't know why we think we got to bombard heaven for 20 minutes. Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord said just, just, just do the priest blessing over her. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face to shine on you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Lord give you. Listen, on my way out of the hospital, the Holy Spirit says this thing, help, help, help my people to understand this thing could be a whole lot worse than what it was or what it, what it appeared to be, but because they don't know the Holy Spirit is working on your behalf on a daily basis, that what could overtake you can't overtake you because behind the scene, what the enemy is trying to do, the Holy Spirit has already blocked him. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Come on here. Give God some praise. What could have happened 
couldn't have happened because I was working on your behalf. And I don't wait till Sunday morning. I'll do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You just got to apply some practical things and partner with me while I'm doing what I'm doing. God said, tell him I don't deal with shoulda, coulda, woulda. He says, because I am that I am. I'm your helper. I'm your healer. I'm your sustainer. I'm your way maker. But if you'll partner with me and do some practical stuff that's going to bring about some action and some results, I'll do what I promised you I'm going to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I get somebody right now to just say he's giving me the power to get wealth. And my wealth this morning is a wealth of knowledge. Now somebody ought to go ahead and bless God and sow into that. What I'm receiving this morning is a wealth of knowledge. Some of y'all ought to be glad God doesn't match you dollar for dollar. You, run, you give your tithes and your offerings, and then you get your little brag on. I'm a I give my tithes and my offering. You ought to be glad God's not matching you dollar for dollar. Because that little measly change I give, if he was going to match me dollar for dollar, I'd be broke, busted, and disgusted. He gives over and above anything that I could ever give. He said, help them to understand this today. I left that hospital listening to God and what God was saying. He said, that thing could have been a whole lot worse and help my people to understand the same thing can happen to any of them. It can be a whole lot worse. What you're dealing with, what you're looking at, what you don't have, what, 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 seems to, what, what seems to come to take you under. He said, what, he said, what they don't know is that I'm the under of what could take them under. He said, look at what I did for Peter when he jumped out of the boat. But when he starts sinking and going down, I became the under, under the under. I became, I became a solid walkway. While Peter could have drowned, I became a solid walkway for Peter. And he walked on it. Go to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy 8, 18. Go to Deuteronomy. If the Lord leads you to sow, feel free. Go right ahead. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, there, there ought to be a hallelujah in every section in this building right now. I said there ought to be a hallelujah in every section of this building right now. There ought to be a, there ought to be a hallelujah on every row right now. You ought to be hallelujah for somebody on your road that, 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 that doesn't say anything. That's the highest praise. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! That's the highest praise. Doesn't get any better than that. Hallelujah! Jesus! Somebody shout, he's the under. 
of the under. <laughs> Deuteronomy 8:18. 8, Deuteronomy 8:18. 8, That's my first scripture, and about to be my last almost. Let's read it together, and I'm reading it first from the uh, New King James Version. I'm reading it from the New King James. You read from whatever you got. And the reason I want you to read it from whatever you got, because it's all right. If we don't say the same word at the same time, it, it, it's still, listen, I want to read this in agreement. If you're reading from a King James Version, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, one or two words might be a little different, but just go ahead and read it anyway, and don't be scared to read it because of what you hear coming through this mic. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by Word of God. We got to put it out in the atmosphere. We got to get it in our spirits. We got to get it in our minds. We got to understand what the Lord is saying to us. We got to get it in our spirits. We got to get it in our mind. We got to understand what the Lord is saying to us. I got to get it in my spirit. I got to get it in my mind. I got to understand what the Lord is saying to me. Come on, I got to get it in my spirit. I got to get it in my mind. I got to understand what the Lord is saying to me. Y'all get so much other stuff in your spirit. Purge yourself today and, and, get, and get this word in your spirit so you'll understand the Holy Spirit is a helper. He's a paraclete. He's alongside us. He's walking with us. He's speaking to us. He is guiding us. He is teaching us. He is leading us. And he wants us to apply these applications, these scriptures, these practicalities. He wants us to apply them and to act on them so we can start seeing some successful results. Now that doesn't mean sickness is not going to ever come your way. But because of the practicalities and the laws that we are applying to do our part, that means sickness is not going to ever come your way. But I know the sufficient grace of God that will take you through even your sickness, even your time of poverty. How many folk in here ever been broke? I mean, really broke. Come on, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. That, that, that ain't funny. That's for real. How many, how, many in, how many folk in here ever been broke? I didn't say you were broke now, but ever been broke. I ain't broke now. I got a little change in my pocket now. Matter of fact, let me get these, let me, let me get these uh, fruit jellies out of my pocket. Let me, let me get my healthy snack out of my pocket. And I got a little bit of change. I ain't broke. I ain't broke this morning. I, I got some change. And, and if I didn't have none, I'd sell you my, my, my healthy fruit snack for 10 cents. And, I, and I'd have me at least a dime. And a whole lot of y'all, before you got saved and came out of the world, you could do a whole lot with a nickel. Some of y'all ain't never been there, so you don't know. And some of y'all who've been there don't care to remember. Some of y'all could climb a lot of trees with a nickel. With a $5 bag. And you could climb higher trees with a dime bag. Stop playing. Don't play me. Don't play me. Just because I ain't been down that road, I've been down some other roads that wasn't good. That wasn't in the will of God. That wasn't God's will for me. Don't play me. I'm like the writer. We've all had our times. In conversations past. And he wasn't talking about with words. He was talking about with actions in the past. Just because I didn't climb no trees didn't mean I didn't do some other things. Because I did. And enjoyed it and had fun doing it. Until, until the Holy Spirit brought me out of those things. Amen. And every now and then, that flesh try to take me back to it. But the Holy Spirit, no, 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 you're closer than that now. You're better than, you're better than that now. You, you know how to say no now. Woo! Hallelujah, somebody.
Verse 18. And I'm doing it from the King James, the New King James, so you read what's in yours. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. But now, most time, most of the time, we stop there. And we often run it. We'll, we'll quote that part right there. Remember, remember, baby. Remember, child, remember. Man, remember. He gives you the power to get wealth. But that's not where he stopped. Let's read on. That he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is, even to this day. He said, I made a promise with Abraham way back then, before you were even a gleam in your father's eye. I made a promise with Abraham eons of years ago that I want to establish with every born again believer so that the promises can work on your behalf every day through the Holy Spirit if you'll just partner with me and do the practical things along with my word. God has given us the power to get wealth. Now, let me do this, let me do this, and I'll probably do about 10 minutes, 10 more minutes, and that's it. I'm, 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 you're going somewhere. Now, listen to this, listen to this, because I said it in the onset, and now I want to say it plain. Wealth can include your position. Wealth can include your influence. Whole lot of y'all, whole lot of you have great influence even if you don't have big money. And the wealth of your influence almost opens a door and has opened many doors for you to get many places because of your influence. Matter of fact, some of you can say it wasn't my education. We got some seniors in this house that are just as wealthy as you ever wanted to see anybody. And some of them didn't go any further than elementary school. They didn't graduate from high school. They didn't go to college. But the Holy Spirit has endowed them with the wealth of influence so that their influence has gotten them where they are today and they're lacking nothing. I hear one or two people clapping, but that's praiseworthy right there. We, we've got some folk in here without a degree. I'll follow them anywhere because of the influence that the Holy Spirit has endowed them with. Some of you may not have much money, but you can have a wealth of influence. God opens doors for you because of the influence that you have on people in a positive and good way. Now, a lot of folk got influence that's a negative influence. And they almost get kicked out of everywhere they go. Some of you all go in with good influence and it opened more doors than you ever thought could have been opened in your life. Somebody shout amen in here. 
Holy Spirit said, I want you to help my people to understand that, that, that along with me helping them to shout and helping, me to, helping them to pray in the Spirit and helping them to speak with new tongues and helping them to do this and helping them to do that, he says, I want to help them on a daily basis to understand that one of the things that go along with the Holy Spirit helping you in every area of your life is that wealth comes also from influence. Because of some of your influences, you've been given rays that you never would have gotten, but because of the influence of wealth that is on your life, they keep giving you stuff that the company say you don't even qualify for. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wealth can include finances. It can. Wealth does include finances. So go ahead and underline that one because that's the one that's most popular with most of us. But it can also include influence. It can also include position. Some of you are managing positions right now. Some of you are managing the position in your own home with your own life and it's paying off because you have allowed the Holy Spirit to come into your affairs and you have partnered with Him. That when I wanted to do something or purchase something, or buy something at the time I wanted it. The Holy Spirit told me to just be still. And let me show you a more excellent way. And listen to this. Because you followed the Holy Spirit, it has put you in a better position than you would have been in if you would have done what you wanted to do when you wanted to do it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Anybody in here better off today because you listen to the Holy Spirit and not your flesh? Some of you are in a better position right now, the Lord is saying, because you didn't follow what all of your friends was doing. And then some of you are in the position you're in right now, the Holy Spirit is saying, because you're trying to keep up with your friends and you don't know what they make. You don't know how many raises they've gotten. You don't know who they've got helping them behind the scene that you don't know is helping them. And you're trying to keep up with them. He said, just listen to me and follow me and keep your eyes on me and don't worry about what anybody else is gaining. If you want a new car and you don't have it today, he says, just keep asking me to bless what you got and you keep driving what you got until you get in a position. Somebody shout position with me. If everybody else is coming in this house or with, a, with a new set of clothes on and you don't have nothing new to wear, he says, don't stay at home. Come on and bless me like you got on something new. You don't know what they've been blessed with and you don't know what you're lining yourself up so that when you get where you're trying to go, you'll be in the position that you want to be in. Wealth is not always money. Wealth is position sometimes. Just because my flesh is screaming and clawing and fighting and hollering for something that I want doesn't mean I got to do it right now. Can I do my famous saying? Some of us need to hear the Holy Spirit and know when to hold up. And when to fold up, when to walk away, and when to run. I ain't going to count my money while you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for me to count it when the deal is done. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Hold up. 
Holy Spirit says, I want to be your helper if you'll just listen to me as I'm speaking to you. And you know how I know it's the Holy Spirit speaking to us? Because with everybody sitting in this auditorium, and some of you, because of the lighting up here and the stuff there, I don't even know, I don't even know who's, who all is in here. But you know how I know the Holy Spirit is speaking? Because of all, out of all of us that's in here, all of us have our different things that the Holy Spirit is trying to say to us right now through this message about wealth. And whatever applies to you, you go ahead and take that crumb today off this table. And some of you who didn't, if I didn't get to your, if the Holy Spirit didn't get to your crumb today. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you for the time. If the Holy Spirit didn't get to your crumb today, don't you stay at home next week. He's got some more crumbs he's dropping on us. Wealth can be finances. Wealth can be beauty. You got some folk, wealth Wealthy because of their beauty. You so pretty, folk just want to give you stuff. You 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 so pretty when you come up, man. They like let me buy your let me hey, let let me buy your dinner here. Let me buy. And you and you stand and you stand up there blinking, your lashes way out here, and you blinking and and talking about. Talking about thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. And then, and then you get with your you get with your girly girl. Child, let me tell you, this 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 lady came in today. It can be a lady. This lady came in, this man came in, and, and honey, I was just sitting there with my cute self. And 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 they came over and paid for my or they didn't even come over. I don't know who it was. I was so pretty sitting there that they paid for my meal. And when I asked for my ticket, they say, Oh, somebody's already paid it forward. Which your cute self and you sitting up there blinking and all wealth but then there are some folk <laughs> yeah yeah listen Wealth, you don't ever know what methods, what means the Holy Spirit is going to use to help you to accomplish wealth. That's why every day of your life, you got to trust the Holy Spirit, and I've got to trust the Holy Spirit with my life, my everyday affairs, my going into the restaurant. I don't wear lashes. I'm good looking without my lashes. I keep the ones I got, but I ain't finna sit up and try. No. Listen, but God could speak to somebody's heart and say, bless my servant over there. You don't even know him, but bless my servant. Anybody ever had that to happen to him? Yeah. And, and it doesn't all come from money. Some of you can be in need of a word, and God can speak to somebody because of your faith and your trust in God and where you are in God, and they can bring a wealth of comfort to you and don't even know what you're dealing with. And wherein you could go somewhere and be broken, and the Holy Spirit because you said to the Lord this morning, God, I commit my day to you. I commit my way to you. And you can leave home broken, hurting, dealing with stuff, going through stuff. And, and the Holy Spirit can speak to somebody somewhere you, where you are. He could have you at a certain place that sometimes you may not even been intended to go, but you just showed up there. And the Holy Spirit sends somebody alongside you, and they speak the things of God and a wealth of comfort, a wealth of encouragement, a wealth of courage comes out of somewhere. 
Well, go ahead and bless God for the day. Go ahead and bless God for the day. Somebody just say, Lord, I receive everything you're saying today. I receive it with joy and gladness. It is your will for me to prosper. It is your will for me to have wealth in every area of my life. Go ahead. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and bless God for that. See, when I hear claps like that, I know somebody just bought into it. When ain't nobody else clapping and somebody does that, I know if it's only that one, the Holy Spirit accomplished what he meant to accomplish in this house today when somebody says, I just received it. Thank you, B.A. Thank you. That's my, that's my little buddy there. Thank you. Thank you. While on others thou art calling, do not pass We're calling you say Say Here my Wow, on others thou I call, calling, do not pass me. I want to do this right here, thou the spring. Thou, the spring of all my come. I don't know what he is to you, but that's who he is to me. You are more than life to me. Whom have I on earth? Whom have I on earth? Whom in heaven but thee? Whom in heaven I'm calling you say Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling, on others thou. Do not pass me by. While y'all play that softly, while you play it softly, is there somebody today that desire to give your life to the Lord? Anybody in here that's not saved today and you want to be saved and know Jesus Christ and the pardoning of sin. Somebody here today that's ready and willing to give up your sinful life and to know Jesus Christ, we recommend him to you today. If there's somebody to say, I want to accept your recommendation and know Jesus today. Pastor, I'm looking for a new way, a different way, a better way, a new life, a different life. I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I've, I've come to the crossroads of life and I, there's got to be something better. And as I sit and listen today, I want to I wanna ask Christ to forgive me for my sin. If, if you're that person, would you just lift your hand right now where you are? If, 
If you're in here today and, and the Lord is dealing with you and you want to be saved, want to leave here knowing that your life is hidden in Christ. If you want to leave here today knowing God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that if you believe on him, you don't have to perish but can have the everlasting life. Would you lift that hand right now and say, Pastor, I, I, I want somebody to pray with me today. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to confess, as the 18 told us this morning, I want, I want to confess that I am a sinner and I want to repent of my sins and then I want to accept Jesus as my Savior. Is there somebody today? Would you lift that hand right now? Here yeah, am I. Anybody that's a backslider want to renew your fellowship with the Lord? Would you lift that hand today? Wow. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. There's a hand right here. Right, right down front here. Right here. Right here on this front row. Right here. Right here. There's a hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Would you just lift that hand right now? That's right. Love on her and embrace her. Renew my fellowship. Doesn't mean I've gone all the way out in the world. Don't mean I've gone back to anything I've been doing. When we talk about a renewing a fellowship, you can just say to God, Hey, God, I just want to re-up with you. I hadn't spent the time I want to spend with you. I hadn't prayed like I should be praying. I hadn't spent time in your word. See, a lot of times we talk about renewing fellowship, we get the idea that folk had to go out and commit sin all over again. No, no, doesn't mean that they've gone back to anything. Sometimes it just means that I've slipped back from my walk with him. I've kind of stepped over to the side, trying to walk a little bit ahead of him, doing some things without consulting with him or talking with him. That's what we're talking about today. Anybody else? Anybody else want to join this young lady? Pastor, I want to renew my fellowship today. Just get that hand up in the air right now. If you're in here, get that hand up. I'm asking people standing around the wall because I don't see folk back there for you to go ahead and start moving when you see that hand lifted. Anybody else? My humble, humble cry. Y'all missing so many folk, I tell you. Y'all standing around the walls looking and it's almost like my mama used to say, you can't see for looking. I don't know. But I see hands going up from up here. I just don't know who they are and where they are. If you're standing around the wall, I expect you to be looking at the section that you're in. You're not standing because we need a wall piece. You're standing because God's got you in that place or you're in that place of God the way you can go and minister to people when you see their hands. So please move. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all know me. Listen, I'm on 10 because when it comes to doing work like this for the kingdom, we got to move. Because the minute the Holy Spirit is drawing somebody, the enemy is standing there to snatch them. And if we don't move and come alongside them like the Holy Spirit comes alongside us, sometimes they'll miss out on what they're asking us to do with them. On other. Anybody else? Anybody else? That was just my encouragement moment for you. Anybody else? Oh, do, do not pass. Anybody else? Pastor, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord today. Just lift that hand up right now. God bless you. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Savior. Prayer of faith has already been prayed with you. Just trust and believe God today. Thank you, Holy Spirit for working on your daughter. Thank you for working on the hearts of everybody in here today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Humble cry. Everybody standing to your feet. Maybe somebody here without a church home today and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you concerning this house. You can come by letter, candidate for baptism, Christian experience, reinstatement, watch care. What is watch care? That while I'm here in this area, I want to bring myself under this ministry to be watched over and cared for while I'm here in this area. You can come even under watch care. If God is speaking to you today and you want to become a part of this ministry, if you're not already and you want to become a greater part under those things or those headings I just gave, you're already in here. Listen, just step right out. Just step right out from where you are. Candidate for baptism, Christian experience, reinstatement, watch care. Just step right out from where you are. Oh, wow. God bless you, Aria. God bless you. 
Father, we thank you now for the day. We thank you for those persons whose hearts you have touched today. We thank you for Holy Spirit for moving upon their hearts. We thank you for what you're doing and for what you've already done and for what you are yet to do. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We've received that word today, Father. And we're going to be better because of your word. We're going to trust you with every area of our lives for you to help us understand how to have wealth of all kinds. How we'll be better servants, better Christians, better faith walkers, better believers, better lovers, better forgivers. We thank you today, Holy Spirit. We thank you today, Holy Spirit, for the wealth of knowledge we have received already today. How to have peace and contentment in the Holy Spirit. We bless you today, God, and we give you the glory. And as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things will be added unto it. And so we bless you right now in Jesus' name. And we shout hallelujah one more time. Not past. I want to go back over this verse one more time. Listen, this verse that, that I want to go back over one more time is not for you. Not for you. This verse is for me right now, and I want to go over it one more time. This is for me. Thou the spring of all. Not that you can't sing it with me, but, 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 I, but, but I'm saying that to him right now. More than life to me. Now, if that's yours, you go ahead and say it, but that's mine. He's more than life. Oh, have I on earth. Whom in heaven but thee? Whom in heaven? Find Savior. Come on, Sister Bowell. Come on. Come on. Here my. Take her, Mike. Take her, Mike. Take her, Mike. Wow. On others down. Do not pass. Do not. Do not pass. Do. Me by. Me by. Me by. Y'all bless God one more time. All right, we're going to let you go in just a minute. Sister Bowyer is coming. Pastor's aide have asked her to come and say some things this morning. A way of encouragement. Y'all receive her. Uh, lock the doors back there, please. <laughs> they only gave me two minutes, so my two minutes has not started yet. I want to thank the pastor's aide for the uh, Nita and her husband, Ken, gave me my dinner. But I'm telling you, that fish was so good. I ain't even use the hot sauce. And I was telling my girlfriend about it, and she said, I had to be mighty good, Midge. So thank you, Nita and Cam, for my dinner. And the people came out. Now, the second thing is, I want to thank uh, Miss uh, Virginia Thompson for raising her daughter, Earlene Martin, to follow directions. Because I sent her at my Bible and my a bag, and she brought just the Bible, and I sent her back out there, and she was, her mama taught her obedience. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to talk about my pastor. It might be y'all pastor, but he my pastor. So I'm telling you about my pastor. 
when I was in Moscow, on the, I, I, all my life I was listening to preaching, but never teaching. Didn't, didn't, didn't get to teaching. But when I was in Moscow under my pastor, I received the Holy Ghost. And later I, taught, I spoke in tongues. And then later, later God gave me some more gifts. And I thank God for that teaching that I received. And like my pastor told us last the other week, the devil will tell you, you ain't got it. But he told me, uh, but God told me, tell somebody, and I told somebody. Now back to my pastor, and I'm through with me. Reverend Bishop, when I came here, they didn't have a packed church. Uh, but you know what? I, I came with my pastor, and Reverend Bishop was preaching the word. He was teaching the word. And he was running 30 revivals, and then we was going to all of them, all those old people. Deacon Cammer, uh, uh, Harry Cammer, uh, Sylvester, Deacon Sylvester Lee, uh, Fred Wagner, the trustee Fred Wagner, oh, all of us, and uh, Miss Meadows, and and Miss uh, Miss Streeter, and um, Miss Streeter weighed 2,000 pounds. She dead now, there ain't no relatives in here of hers, so I can talk. But anyway, our pastor talked we followed him, and we followed the word, and he'd been here 40 years, and I'm telling you the truth. Now, he done, I done heard the scriptures, but he has never preached the same sermon. I've never heard Reverend Bishop preach the same sermon. It's always something different. So I, th I know he on the anointing of God. And not only that, he planted seeds. This man didn't know he was, well, he did. He was planting seeds. And God was giving the increase. And when he told me we finna start 8 o'clock serving, I said, well, people ain't coming to 8 o'clock because I knew I wasn't a morning person. And I looked around, and more people was coming to 8 o'clock than they was at 11 o'clock. And one Sunday it snowed. And I'm telling you, it snowed. Everybody was snowed in. I walked to church. I don't know who that, who it was two more people here. Reb came to church. I was on the choir. And my pastor preached, and I don't care what small church he went to, Reb Bishop preached like he was going to a, he was preaching among thousands. Every sermon. He didn't, if the church didn't have but 10 people in it, Reb Bishop preached like it was full. And he taught, he taught me. And if you go to hell, it's your business because Reverend Bishop's show ain't the reason. And I thank God, and I thank God for him. I thank God for you. Now, Pastor, I want to leave you with this. He knows your name. He knows your name. He knows your name. He knows your name. And he walks with you. And he talks with you. And he tells you, you are his own. Reb, ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep you from God. He honors you, Reb. And I'm walking better, y'all, because he knows my name. Y'all bless God for Sister Boel. The Lord joined us and her family when we were in Moxville, and thank God she's still going on in Jesus' name today. Before DJ comes to give the announcement concerning the uh, youth ministry and what they're getting ready to do, let me also take this medium so I won't keep talking as I was going to do, but I want to thank the Pastor's Aid Ministry sell out yesterday they had a complete sell out yesterday and I want to thank them for their hard work their hard effort God knows I after I left the funeral yesterday I uh, came on here with a shirt and tie on but 
Man, that heat was beating me down so bad I came out of that tie. But listen, I was sitting down under the shade tree, but they worked so diligent, so hard, so together, so much in unison that it cooled me off. Just watching them do what they were doing collectively. And thank all of you for your support. Thank your family members, people you told, people you invited. I met, I met so many uh, family members yesterday of many of our own people here and enjoyed talking with them and sharing with them. I want to thank everybody for the hard work you all did on yesterday. Thank our president, our leader, Sister Marlene Beeman, our vice president, <laughs> Sister Tikos Lindsay, our advisor, Deacon Beeman, and all others. Thank y'all for your hard work. Y'all join me in giving them a round of applause today and thanking them. And thank yourselves for your support. And even if you couldn't get out here to purchase, thank you for praying for them and supporting them behind the scenes. We need each other. We have each other. And we're going to help each other. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Can we celebrate God for an awesome leader? Come on, he just preached about influence and some of us are in the places we're in because of the influence that God has given him. Some of us have walked in doors that we had no business walking into because of the influence of this man. Some of us are driving cars that we have no business driving because of this man. Some of us are living in houses we have no business living in because of this man. God bless and so, you, God, son. we honor you for God the bless integrity you. and for the influence that you have over this Thank mission. Thank you, son. God, we bless you. I'm just standing on behalf of the youth department. I will not be here long. Um, two weeks from now, which will be August the 26th, we will convene at the top of the lot. We will be out at 5 o'clock. That starts our family cookout. We will have your parents here. For those of you that was not here on last week, we need everyone to dress as if it was their first day of school. So if you were in the 90s, dress like you were in the 90s. If you were in the 80s, 60s, 70s, dress like that. It may be a gift card for the best dressed person. Amen. Amen. Also, we will have at the 6 o'clock hour, we will then take the kids from outside and bring them in to the sanctuary where we will have our annual glow party. Yes. Um, we'll have food, we'll have drinks, we'll have, we'll have Kool-Aid, um, <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have snacks, and then around 7.30 we'll come down and we'll get the kids their school supplies and parents, you may be able to line up outside to get your kids at 8 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Y'all bless God for Minister David Coleman. Thank God for what he for what he's doing. Come on, preach Adam. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. I thank God for the word of God. Bless you. The Holy Ghost being our helper. Yes. You know, yesterday I was at the Pastor's Aid, we was at the fish fry, and I came to because I'm a member of the Pastor's Aid. Yeah. And I wasn't feeling very well. The Pastor's Aid's members, they didn't push on me. They didn't ask me why I was sitting where I was sitting or why I was in the car. They just asked me, was I okay? Yeah. Well, I was okay. But you know, that heat got to me. Yes. So I went home, went to sleep. Woke up, though. When I woke up, I was in a trance. I, I have a gifting that some people may not understand. Yes. Well, I travel in the spirit. Yes. Sometimes I get up and go places. I ended up at this church about 8 o'clock. Yeah. And William was so kind. William Crawford, Jr. He, yeah. he was so kind to me. Yeah. <laughs> because I said, let me tell y'all, God is real. Don't think he ain't. Yes. And don't think he got giftings. When you submit your life to him, that he'll take you into places in yes. his mysteries. Yes. So that you yes. can know and warn the people. Yes. And I said, William, ain't nobody here. And it's Sunday morning. 
I wasn't out of my mind. I wasn't hallucinating. Yes. I don't have Alzheimer. But I realized I ended up at the church. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. said, that fish must have got you. Yeah. <laughs> he was very kind to me. Yeah. He said, no, it's Sunday. I said, it's 8.15. We should be in Sunday school. He said, well, your time is right, but the day on your watch is wrong. And he took me back to where Sister Lindsay, Minister Lindsay, had taped the Facebook showing where we was. And I said to myself, God, yeah. out of all that living I done, did I miss you? Yeah. You know, I told the pastor, I said, oh, I have an assignment. Yeah. I got to tell somebody something yeah. before it's too late. We don't want them to miss out on heaven. Yeah. We want them to change their life. And pastor, with his kind self, he had a well check <laughs> come to my house. <laughs> my daughters live 40 minutes away from me on either side. Yeah. But my oldest girl is always sending out an APB on me. You know, if she can't reach me on the phone, she'd be calling the church. I yeah. tell her, don't panic. Don't yeah. do that. I work on the telephone, so when I get off of work, I don't want to be on the phone. Yeah. I don't carry my phone in my pocket on my head. You know, on my hip. When I'm done, I'm done. But the well check police came and I tell you I was sleeping good. But <laughs> heat, heat stroke. It'll come upon you or before you know it. You don't even have to be doing nothing but That's sitting right. down. That's right. I work from home, so I'm in the house. I don't get out to five o'clock PM, but I was outside all day and I had got a new treatment that they put me on and I just think I just went through too much heat exhaustion. Yeah. Pastor said he looked at me and it looked like I was just dehydrated yeah. a little. He yeah. didn't want me to be weak. But when they came to the house, I, the cops was opening up the window. They was breaking in the window, y'all, because yeah. I must have been <laughs> really sleeping. And I just thank and praise God for Pastor Lindsay, That's Sue, right. Sister Lindsay, That's Minister right. Lindsay. Well, well. And the pastor sending her out with my daughters. That's right. To make sure I had my right mind. Yes. I was still here and I hadn't gone nowhere because people are dying from heat exhaustion. That's right. They, That's they right. are really just dying. Y'all hear that? It is very serious. And you can lay down and go to sleep and you can just keep right on sleeping. That means you're sleeping away. Yes. But I thank and praise God. For the man of God, he, he won't just send out a well check for me. He'll send it out for anybody. That's right. That's right. That the spirit of the Lord. That's right. Tell him that's why it behooves us to have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Pastor, I love you. I love William, you. William, I love you. Yes. Brother Patrick, I love you because yes. I know I scared them. Yes. I know I, because William said, uh, blah, 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 blah. He, he was trying to, and he was so kind. Yes. I told Pastor, I said, William was kind. Yeah. Because he probably thought I was crazy, but I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you, Preacher Adams. God bless you. Y'all bless God for that testimony. Man. And I want, she, she told it Mal, but I want to thank you. I, 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 I didn't want to. I would have told her earlier, but I didn't ask her permission to tell it. But I'm thankful she moved to tell it. Because I want you to know. I wanted you to know. And thank God he moved upon her to tell it. This, this is why we have to walk with the Spirit. I, I was sitting under that tree when she left the parking lot yesterday. And the Lord just happened to fasten my eyes on her going across the parking lot. And I saw the exhaustion on her. But she got in the car, drove around. I was waving by to her, and she was waving back. But, but the Lord allowed me to see what was happening as she was walking across the parking lot, and I was sitting way over there. And when William sent me the text last night, it came back to me. I said, no, she's, we, we got to do something. And, and so he told me that, that uh, he had called Preacher Lindsay, so I called Preacher Lindsay back. And thank God she got up out of her house, and this was, this was after 9 o'clock last night. She said, Pastor, you stay put. I'll go. I contacted Preacher Adam's daughter, connected those two calls, as she just said, and everything 
went like clockwork. I said to her, I said, y'all make sure y'all get in there to her because I saw the exhaustion on her. And I want to make sure she's not dehydrated and lying in that house. But then the Holy Spirit, while we were sitting there and the policeman was on the way, Holy Spirit said to me, she's in a hard, deep sleep. And man, they, I could hear them on the phone because they had me on the speakerphone. Man, they were beating on that door. I mean, they were beating her. I said, she's in a deep sleep. And we started praying right then in agreement that God would bring her out of that deep sleep. We started calling on the Holy Spirit, our helper, our aid, our comforter, and telling God to bring her to consciousness right now in Jesus' name. And the, next, and the next thing Preacher Lindsay said, did you hear that, Pastor? I said, yeah, I hear that big mouth. She was saying, what y'all beating on my door for? Listen, if you'll ask the Holy Spirit, he is our helper. And let me say this before we go. Let me say this. If he doesn't help you overnight, don't give up on him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because somebody's going somebody's to discredit this right now. I, I'm not going to let you. Listen, if he didn't, if he, he hasn't always helped me at that moment, but help was already on the way. It's like Daniel, it's like Daniel, that when the angel got there with the answer, Daniel said, what took you so long? He said, I left heaven 21 days ago. That's when you prayed 21 days ago. But I had to wrestle with the prince. Oh, glory to God. Hey, God. He said I had to fight with the spirit to get there. Listen to this. Listen to this because y'all got to go home. Y'all got to go home. What he was saying to Daniel is that you could have messed it up 21 days ago if you would have started grumbling and complaining. But because you waited and you prayed, that helped me because another angel came alongside and we fought the prince and the powers of the air and now I'm here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom in Jesus' name. Now go ahead and bless him on your way out. If you were blessed by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.